Welcome to the Krypton Report. And continuing my interview with podcasters and friends, I have on today's episode the host of Always Hold On to Smallville, Mr. Zach Moore. Welcome, Zach. What's up, man? Happy to be here. That's glad. You know, it's nice to have you on the show. We've talked about this for a while, and it's just been, well, crazy. I mean, you have a busy schedule. We have a busy schedule. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, so Zach's podcast that I've talked about probably just about in every episode I've mentioned um, <laughs> is he is going back and, you know, reviewing Smallville. And what's crazy is we're on here. I think by the time this podcast episode airs, we will be right past the 20th anniversary of Smallville. Isn't that crazy? 20 years ago, like that makes <laughs> you feel old, man, to know that the, the, the fresh new Superman of the 21st century that you grew up watching grow up is now it shows 20 years old. I mean, you know, I, I've talked about before on your podcast and in here just how that show is in the background of my life and was really like where I was in life. Mm-hmm. And then now we have Superman Lois, which, as you can see, the child behind me uh, represents where I am in life now. And it's just kind of crazy because I'm like, you know, you still watch Smallville. And like, oh, yeah, Smallville. You know, it's not yeah, Smallville. And now you're like, there's like kids who weren't even born when the show came out who are now finding Smallville. Like, oh, I like Smallville. And you're like, yep, I'm old. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's cool to, it is cool because, you know, Smallville is at that perfect time to sit back, watch, and kind of reminisce and recap and look back on it compared to, um, you know, the newer shows. And stuff like, you know, was it we just hit the 10 year anniversary of Arrow? Um, nine was it nine or is yeah, because let's see, Arrow was 20, yeah, it was nine years, yeah, yeah. I had to think for a second, I was like, wait, and it, yeah. it's been oh, it's and it's only been over for one year, really. yes. So next year's the 10 10 ugh, next year's the 10th anniversary of when the Arrowverse started, right. And it's already like, wow, that whole thing, because it's not like Arrow's, you know, Arrow is done and over with, but there's still that remnants that continues because of the other shows that it came. So it still feels like it's part of our lives, right. though. It's I mean, almost done. all the other shows going on started on Arrow in some form or fact. I mean, obviously, The Flash, Barry Allen showed up first on Arrow and. The only uh, the only spinoffs were Black Lightning, which because it was originally was supposed to be a Fox property. Yeah, true spinoff, like and unrelated. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh Supergirl uh started on CBS and wasn't supposed to really be part of it. And then Stargirl, which mm-hmm. is on C on CW and eventually will probably get in the fold somehow. But uh I think because they're moving to Canada next year for filming, I think, if I remember reading something. But every other show, Flash, Legends, Batwoman, all s- were spun from an episode of Arrow. Mm-hmm. And in you know Superman and Lois was from Supergirl, which they folded into the Arrowverse, obviously. So yeah, yeah. it's all man. We could have had yeah, that's an alternate universe somewhere, right? There's Smallville had its Flash spinoff and its Aquaman spinoff and its Supergirl spinoff and its Green Arrow spinoff. I mean, it's so funny you look at the the characters. I mean, other than Aquaman, who obviously went on to movies and was the most successful movie of the (laughs) DCEU. You know, which is, you know, it, it blows uh, your mind like Aquaman. Really? Aquaman. I, and I love the Aquaman movie, by the way. I mean, it's, it's, it's I don't know. I just, I found it a, a great, enjoyable superhero movie. But, you know, outside of Aquaman, who they tried to spin off, literally shot a pilot for with Justin Hartley, who became Gary Arrow on Smallville a year later after they didn't pick up that show. All those other characters could have easily had, you know, they have shows now in the Arrowverse, could have easily had their own show from Smallville. I always All of want- them. You know, I always wanted the Smallville spinoff show to just be like the Justice League, where kind of like how the 90s X-Men cartoon was like, it would have this intro with all the X-Men, but not all of them were in the episode. So you'd have this Justice League show that maybe this week's episode is a uh, Green Arrow or and this week's is, uh, you know, Aquaman. You know, you wouldn't have to mm-hmm. have all the characters all the time. And right. we never got that. And it's sad that Smallville ended and so did all those other potential characters to live on so yeah yeah it, it's true I, I think they they talked about steven s tonight who wrote and directed justice the season six episode i think he actually planned to do a spinoff 
uh, like there, there were talks of that, but it just would have been too expensive. And uh, obviously at the time, and then of course, you know, Tom Welling never wore Superman costume. So at some point you got to either talk around that or end it or convince him to do it. I mean, it, so if, if he's never going to do that, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah. So Zach is the Smallville guy, you know, that's, and <clears throat> so I have these questions here that we talk about and, you know, we're going to throw them out there, but, you know, being the small little guy, some of the questions are like, nope, don't count, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but, <laughs> but still being the Superman guy, um, you know, it, it all works. So the first question is, how did Superman start for you? You know, what, what's your first uh, remember? Like, was it, you know, like the more I've thought about mine, I think my first visual of Superman was the Flesher cartoons. Like I, I remember getting that VHS and I actually have that tape up there on my shelf oh nice nice um and i you know i remember those somewhere in the background you know uh so where does superman start for zach i think it definitely starts with the christopher reeve movies you know, my parents had them on tape uh so i watched them a lot as a kid you know put on my little superman costume watch along uh also uh the george reeve show the adventures of superman it was on naked night when i was a kid uh so I remember just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if kids still have these, but I had a little, like a little trampoline when I was a kid. So I just remember jumping on that, <laughs> watching the show, that kind of thing, you know, taking off exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so those are, those are my formative memories of Superman. Also complete side note. And I'm sure, I don't know if I've actually even mentioned this before on, on the podcast or not, but we had a phone booth in my house growing up. What? Uh, yeah. My, my mom used to work in, in telecommunications and, uh, they were she's doing some you know job i think it was from i believe it might have been from astroworld or something some some place that had phone booths that were getting rid of them or something and she was like can i have that and they were like sure and it's this wooden phone booth and it was always this conversation piece in our living That's room growing awesome. up. so that was part of my you know superman thing i have pictures of me as a little kid in there and the superman uh Superman costume too. I, I should I should post those and I don't think you know I don't know if I've mentioned those or not on, on a podcast. I don't I don't think it, so. But... I don't. I've listened to pretty much every podcast you've done on Always Hold well, On thank Smallville. You. you know, like I mean, I discovered your podcast back in season one because our first mm-hmm. conversation was Ryan. Yeah, or, or Stray. Or Stray. Yeah, the, and the then Ryan was the second. Episode. Yeah, the, the yeah, Ryan no, I mean, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we go way back, man. So <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah, cra- you... it's crazy how much time has passed. Right. Like, a lot of um, life has changed in the last. I didn't think it would take me in real time ten years to do Smallville. I, I think I'll. I won't take me ten, <laughs> but it'll be pretty close because I thought when I started, like, yeah, I'll just. I think you do like three of these a season and I'll be done in like, I don't know, four years, but three of these a season, three seasons a year. Yeah. But you know, life happens. I take breaks to do other things. Go kind of like, Hey, Superman Lowe's came out. Let's talk about that. So exactly. Anyway. I mean, how could you not as a fan, like this, this new show with a new, like, and I, I said this before is like Superman Lois was like, kind of like, okay, let's blend Lois and Clark and Smallville into a show. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, so. it's like, where did we're going to kind of redo Smallville it with their kids and then we're going to kind of do a continuation of kind of where we left off with lois and clark like yeah. the next you know the, the next moment and so everyone's yeah. like okay but you know that uh, you said that about the phone booth is cool um there's a place up here like an outdoor shopping mall town that still has phone booths that are for fun and every time i uh, were up there i'm like yeah and we were on vacation one time and we found like a phone booth graveyard and i was just like Oh, wow. <laughs> it was just creepy because, like, it's all these old, like, boxed, you know, phone booths. And I'm just like, that. that's haunting. Um, it's a relic of a, of a, di- of a different era. You, know? you, <clears throat> you talked about your photos, which would be awesome. Uh, I've been asking my mom to find the photo of me at the washing machine with my arm like this crying because she had to wash my Superman costume pajamas. Oh no. So they're in the washer and I'm just sitting there in my <laughs> you diaper. You couldn't wear them that one my, day. You're upset, right? Like I'm in my diaper or my underwear. Like I was, you know, I was, and I'm like just crying because there they are. And, um, you know, when you talked about Nick at night, I think the, you know, you think you sometimes the memories kind of when you're young with that, you're not sure. But I think my first Superman with George was on low. Um, I love Lucy. Like, I think oh, I saw wow, the okay. I Love yeah. Lucy episode before his actual show proper because I used to watch I Love Lucy with my grandma. And I remember seeing that with my grandma and great grandma. 
So I think that was my first introduction to George as Superman. Yeah, it, and the, the George Reeves <laughs> show, I I mean, it's on DVD now. I don't, is it on HBO Max? Nope. It's part okay. of my campaign to keep mentioning it. Like, hey, you know, that's why like I say like I miss DC Universe. And people are like, oh, well, it's all on HBO Max. I'm like, no, it's not. Because what I loved about DC Universe was the stuff Everything. I didn't own. Well, yeah, I mean, the old Shazam series that it was you couldn't find that was just there. It's like, wow, this existed, you know, or the George Reeves Superman, which is harder to find all the seasons. I have them um, all on DVD from back in the day, so I'm holding on to those. I, I mean, even when stuff gets streaming, I always I'm gonna get we're collectors, man. We're fans. So we're gonna keep all, all this stuff. But, exactly uh, because of like you mentioned on your podcast is sometimes streaming services will clip, nip, and change little things in what they broadcast. Like um, one of the most interesting things, and I point this out, is go to, if you were to go to Netflix right now and watch the first episode, or, how, okay, this episode, the Reaper episode of Supernatural, the musical cues are not the musical cues that they were later put on season one on the dvds oh, okay because when they were able to release the whole media they had gotten more popular had the budget they could buy the classic rock song music that they wanted to use it's all like that of the time pop songs you know just like on smallville but they took all of that out when they released on home video home media whatever yeah right. and it's all like in the in the episodes don't fear the reaper if you watch it on dvd but if you watch it streaming, it's all the original music that's when they broadcasted. And that's why it's even weirder because, of course, Supernatural's legacy is the last episode always starts with Carry On My Wayward Son, recapping the season or seasons, depending on where it is. And that's like what it kind of became the unofficial theme song. But if you watch the streaming of the first season, it's not that song because they didn't have the budget. So it's, it's, to me, it's like, that's another reason why the home release can be very much like a times capsule. Cause we all know how on digital, you can just edit. It's just a file, you know? Right. right. And they can change whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got a shout out to my friend, <coughs> Matt Truix. He's experienced this a couple of times, once with birds of prey. <laughs> and then again with Lois and Clark, because there's some popular music on Lois and Clark that not all of it gets replaced, but some of it does on both these shows. Uh, but like it's it, Lois and Clark's on HBO Max now in HD, which is fantastic, yeah. right? Everybody go check that out. I watched uh, the pilot, which the pilot, which is awesome because it's a it's a made for TV movie, basically. So exactly. And a lot of the music is there, but some of it's not. Uh, so hold on to those DVDs. Same thing with Birds of Prey, right? It's just because they didn't have these music packages, right? When they sold the show and, and the way that uh syndication and, and and streaming has all gone and stuff like that so hold on to those dvds always hold on to those dvds basically yeah. <laughs> so small before very fortunately small didn't have that problem the dvds had all the music hulu it's on as of this recording who knows where it'll be yeah. you know whenever anyone listens to this right but uh they have all the music so i because that would be i would be heartbroken if they had to change anything on small because part of my huge fandom is the the music so anyway yes. um it makes you hey. wonder when the blu-ray <laughs> we have the blu-ray coming uh, later this yeah. month, like, yeah, what? October, yeah, in two weeks, in two weeks, I think it is. I, I think it'll be fine because if it was fine on the DVDs, it'd be fine on the Blu-rays. I mean, always, that's my understanding. I, mean, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> it makes sense. It always makes me wonder, like, how the contracts or the license, because I mean, everything's changed about um, how you know shows sell and the royalties and everything works through syndication now that we have streaming. So it's like right who knows what the contracts were set up for back when like you said, and they sold these shows. Um, so we got Zach starting with Chris. Now, did you see Superman one first or two? Because my memory as a child is always, I don't know which one I saw first because they just blended together in my mind. Yeah. I think I saw them simultaneously. You know, I remember, you know, this is big in my household and I, I've said this, I know I've said this on the podcast before we record stuff off TV. Like, I don't know if everybody did this, but we have VCRs and blank VHS tapes. I still have when I watch Return of the Jedi burned in my brain where the commercial breaks were. Yeah. Because yes. that was the only Star Wars I had until they did the THX uh, first trilogy box yeah. release in like 90. Ordered again for the last time, right? It was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he wasn't kidding. George Lucas, <laughs> he tried to tell you that this was the last time he could own those. No, I feel the same way. I mean, 
like King Kong is my favorite movie of all time. And so I watched the colorized version on TNT and we record that off TV. And so like, I'm just, I know exactly when it's like, it's going to fade to <laughs> fade to black or so interesting how we, how we watch stuff like that. But anyway, that's your, I know we're going on so many <laughs> side tangents. That's, tangents is, that's what this, that's what this is about. Yep. It's, it's about getting to know other fans and podcasters <laughs> who podcast about the same stuff, but just like who you are as a fan, you know? Cool. Well, yes. Well, I'm all about tangents, so it's not, it's not a problem for me, as, as if you're on the podcast that I do, right? But uh, I, I think I must just watch them simultaneously, and I think I always do. It's one of those things when you're a kid, you have all this time, and it's like, well, I'm going to watch the Superman movies today, this weekend, right? And yep. so you just watch both of them, and the one and two do kind of flow together anyway, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so those are the ones I would watch over and over and over, and we never had Superman 3 or 4. Um, I've said Superman this before. 3, Four was just on TV constantly. I felt like it was always on basic cable, like WGN was, or whatever. Like it was always like, maybe. I feel like every time I was at my grandpa, every time I was at my grandpa's house, you know, I'd play in his basement and I felt like I'd turn it on and there was Superman four. Like it just <laughs> was there. Three was the one that I didn't see till a long, till actually, um, Oh six when they released wow. all the, because okay. my well, local, on DVD huh, for Superman returns. Yeah. Because my local video store had the box, but the the copy was always gone. You know, and as a kid, I didn't think about, well, let's go check the library or another video store. That's right, kids. You didn't have access to everything you ever wanted at all times back when we were kids. And that was probably another factor why I never saw Superman 4 for a long time. I remember Superman 3 I saw on TV, but it, like, scared me. It was was when the the woman becomes a cyborg. I was like, that's terrifying. You know, it's creepy. So, and, then, and I know a lot of people who saw it, no matter what, like whenever, when you saw it, if you're at a certain age and you saw that, it's one of those things just sticks with you. It's like, oh my God, it's like, it's going to go run and hide behind the couch situation. It's just, it's just terrifying, right? Cause she, like the music stops and she screams and it stops and comes this side. It's you're just not a, eerie. You're a it's kid. Weird. It's like, oh, it's unsettling, right? I bet if I go we'll grab my kids right now and show it to them, they'd be like, <laughs> scar them for life. <laughs> I'd be like, so what'd you guys do in the last podcast? Well, me and Zach Moore were talking and we decided to scar our children for life. That's so right. So we showed them the Superman 3 scene. You guys got to th- gotta go through the same rites of passage as that we did. But uh, but Superman 4, I eventually saw we rented from a you know, blockbuster or something. And that was, I mean, I say like later, like, I, you know, I was probably watching the Christopher Reeve first two movies and I was like five or six. And then like maybe when I was like nine or 10, I saw Superman four finally. And then somewhere in there, I saw bits and pieces of Superman three. I mean, you'd always see, so to me, Superman three was always on TV. Mm. It was like, you see bits of piece of evil Superman here, this or that. So like, I kind of knew what it was. Uh, but one and two are the ones I just watch over and over and like burn into my mind. It's like my favorites and, and always will be, you know, so. <laughs> and I mean, that that's why like I have such a high defense for Superman four is because like it was just there part of the part of the childhood you know in the background and you liked it because it was like superman versus like nuclear man he's powerful he's not exactly like a kryptonian but yeah, it's a guy in a costume it's very comic booky yeah superman so an, i mean it's it's not it's not a great film not even a good film but you know what they they did some stuff that is straight out of the comic books i mean you got it's superman with a giant net of nuclear missiles thrown into the sun i mean that is straight out of comic books and you got to <laughs> respect that you know and you know it's it is what it is you know and it is what it is. I'm glad it exists. I'd rather have four Christopher Reeve Superman movies than three or two, you know? Because, I mean, there's it's good like- parts to it, and his performance is good. And, you know, one of the big things I actually liked about it was he went back, like, to Smallville as Clark. And we have this great scene mm-hmm. of him on the farm. Uh, and one of the deleted scenes is, like, him looking through where he's selling the farm. And then he hears the guy pull up, and then you see him turn on the Clark. Like, you know, and he No, comes no, that's, out. that's in the movie, though. That, that's, is it? Uh, yeah. It, maybe it's an extended scene. I don't know. There's a lot of deleted scenes. There's a lot of extended deleted stuff before. <laughs> I would love if they somebody found that on a shelf and WB and clean that up and released it because that, that'd well, be fantastic. You see all these a, fan movements a, going on out there, right? <laughs> there's a guy who's doing it himself little by little. Uh, I can't remember his name. He just did an interview on uh, Superboy Legacy podcast. He was talking about how he's been cleaning up for and yeah, Aaron Price, his... I think his name is, and he's Maybe. doing some special that's special sa- effects and stuff. I mean, I'm keeping an eye on that. Look, that looks interesting. I, I don't know if I don't know if uh, I mean, obviously, he doesn't have access to the like deleted scenes that aren't all dirty and stuff. Because if you if anyone's seen the the DVD sets, mm-hmm. they have, they release some deleted scenes for Superman. I'm like, okay, that's kind of fuzzy, but whatever. But some are like got scratches all over them. And like, where did you find this stuff? Like, did you pull it out of the trash can? Like, I'm I, I'm sure there is a complete somewhere. 
scenes or a cut of a rough cut of this in some archives and just people just need to find it and restore it because it's the last Curse of Superman adventure and it deserves to be seen. Because if I mean, people don't know, Superman 4 was like, it got slashed like in half. They cut like 45 minutes out of it. Uh, so despite its dodgy special effects to begin with, the story's kind of nonsensical because they took out like a third of the movie, you know? Yep. So I, I'm all I'm all for that. And and I, it, and I think it does have historical significance since it's one of the, the Curse of Superman movies. So I mean, it does. And the thing is, you could, if you put it out like Warner Archive, it would sell just like they released Supergirl, and yeah. they released it on DV Blu-ray with like two of the cuts. Like right, one, I got that one, one too from the Warner Archive. Yep. Right? One cut was the, the director's cut, like I think the Blu-ray or the DVD was, and the other one was the standard. I don't remember. I have yeah. it. But I have it, yeah. if they did Superman 4, I mean they released the three-hour TV cut of Superman the movie. Yep, same Warner Archive. Yeah, yep. I got and that. I, too. I that. love that. Yeah. So we, we, there's I, an audience for all this stuff, you know, right. and I think uh, and Christopher Reeve just even beyond just Superman fans like pop culture, he is super mad, right? And 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 he always he's will the, be to he's pop the culture. Default, like yeah, you, you know, when you say Superman in just a general overarching conversation with just your normie, that's your default. Mm-hmm. It'll be a long time before that isn't your default, and then it's kind of like who would it be you know like well and and i think that i think the reason that is is because one back then there was less media there was less options there was less (laughs) versions of everything it was like okay you had your well kirk allen was the first live action superman and some serials um and then there was george reeves on the show which lasted several seasons and george reeves was superman for for like 20 years as far as pop culture goes and then krista reeve comes along and he's superman in major motion pictures like four of them over the course of over a decade and then, and then no one, there was no other big movie Superman until Brandon Routh, who was playing Chris Reeves Superman. So that even extends the legacy, you know? So, so if you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, there's no, the, the, the reach of him as Superman and the pop culture imprint is, is going to be really hard to replicate by anybody. Cause even today you have Henry Cavill playing Superman in movies. You have Tyler Hecklin playing him on TV, right? You just had Brandon Routh return as him on TV. Uh, you, you have all kinds of versions of everything going on. So th- there's not like no one has a, a sole claim on the character like Mr. Reed did for so long. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct. You know, it's we had the crisis that was kind of a, hey, look at all the stuff that we've had. So, but all right, moving on with all my questions here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, you're fine. I don't know, we can tangent all day. Uh, favorite version of Superman. Now, that means it could be a movie, comic, you know, even if you're like, hey, I love the old radio, like, what is your favorite version of the character? You know, as a Smallville guy, I feel like I have to say Smallville, right? Because that's like the definitive Superman for me uh, to an extent. Obviously, Chris Reeve is the definitive Superman for me as Superman, but it's like, I just, I love the Smallville universe so much. I love the Smallville universe, you know? And of course, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, if you listen to podcasts, I poke a lot of fun at it and make a, and have a lot of criticisms of it, but it all comes from a place of love, right? Yes. I mean, um, if you love it, you have the right to say, hey, I know it's not perfect. Like, you know, I've told, yeah, I told you this there's before. There's nuance, you know? <laughs> My brother, we would watch it. Eventually the theme song became Somebody Save Lana. You know, not Somebody Save Me. You know, he was like, Somebody Save Lana. And I remember when I was watching the tent scene, he's like, that show's still on? Because he like dropped off in season eight, you know, and that was, that was most people's reaction when I told him I was still watching Smallville, like the later seasons. Like, whoa, that's that's is he Superman yet? I'm like, well, <laughs> no, but um, uh. so yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's Smallville is so much like its own thing almost. It's hard to say. This is my favorite version of Superman. It's my favorite show. People ask me, it's, it's my go to. So, I mean, if I had to say, yeah, definitely my favorite TV show would be Smallville. My favorite movies would be the Christopher Reeve movies. And comic book wise, I got to go with like anything written by Jeff Johns because he's my favorite comic writer and especially his team with Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Mm-hmm. I feel like they capture the character writing and visually wise um, and because they draw him like Chris Reeve. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> so it's, much. you know, I was, I was recently talking about that because, you know, we, we, we have the, the Superman 78 comic that just came out and we have the Batman 89 comic that just came out, and, you know, and I was talking with some friends, like how it's interesting to me how, they're able to draw like Michael Keaton just enough where in your brain you can say it's Michael Keaton, but it's not an exact likeness. And then you look at the Superman 78 comic and you see how they draw Christopher Reeves similar where it's just enough like him. But then I'm like looking at the Gary Frank, like this almost looks more like him than the 78 comic does. And I'm like, how do they get away with that kind of likeness? Um, 
because they're not saying that it's him like they are. So it's just interesting, you know, when you bring up uh, how they, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank had done it. Mm-hmm. And even most recently, if you go back and you look at uh, Doomsday Clock, where I think was the last time Jeff Johns and Gary Frank had done the character. So mm-hmm. uh, little cryptos in here. Crypto. <laughs> That's what, my, that's what my kids named our, our white puppy. There you go. Crypto. That is a cute up. dog. <laughs> he's a cute dog. He's, he's, he's a great puppy. Um, so, I mean, that, that takes out like a bunch of questions because we know, but, you know, Smallville is great. Like, I love Small. Like, I have the Smallville jacket hanging up over here, and I have all the Smallville action figures, all three of them, you know, <laughs> all three yeah. of the the clarks they released right. i'm i'm bummed they never released like you know trench coat clark like black trench coat clark i feel like oh yeah i, I love the, the blur costume from season nine i uh i, I you just, know i have the fungal pops you know and mm-hmm. they have one wave and i was always hoping for a second wave maybe yeah. we'll get one i don't because the first wave came out of nowhere i was like okay like what was this like a couple years ago like 2018 or something 2019 yeah. they're like smallville i'm like smallville funko pops real late on this yeah, like, i mean <laughs> and it was weird because it wasn't like okay for example like the, they did the clark scarecrow which makes sense you know then they did the clark kent season finale shirt rip which is great but i feel like that's not a that's i have that one but i feel like that's not like the number one representation of the character like why don't we have like well, yeah, it's 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 blue shirt, to, red jacket or to the to the same thought that it's like if you ever look at I would say half of the Internet articles about Smallville these days, it's always the last shot of the show with them ripping the shirt. I was like, first of all, spoilers. Second of all, that does not represent the show at all. <laughs> that I, is such false advertising. <laughs> I wish, you know, like I love the red jacket Like I, before I even owned it. Like, I just thought that was cool because it was the closest of giving him a costume that was more his own compared to you know anything else where he was ripping off the brandon routh costume or you know whatever Mm -hmm. and i would like that as a funko or that as the image of clark you know and that's like when crisis and everyone's like is he gonna be superman that was what i was hoping like maybe he'd go out in the barn and grab that jacket and put that jacket on you mean the season 10 jacket yeah yeah but you know the, the the first wave of of the of the funko pops um they had the president Lex, which I loved. I was, I've always loved Lex in the white suit. So it's funny. Uh, yes. I know that doesn't represent like the Lex of the show that often, but that did show up a lot. It showed yeah. I mean, even season one, it showed up season seven, whenever they have like alternate evil Lex Luthor feature visions, that's what you have. Like president Lex has got the glove and all that. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of a deep cut, but I, I, I that was on my list. Like I will, I always want something of this and they made it. That's fantastic. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, Green Arrow, uh, yeah, great, but he was a main character in the last three seasons and like a guest star and a, and a few episodes before that. that but I, I get like Green Arrow is popular now because of Smallville, but yeah. making him one of the first wave of Funko Pops is, it was, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't, no, I'm with I you. I didn't because, understand that. Yeah. Because, you know, like separating the art from the artist, Chloe was a bigger deal to Smallville. You know, we didn't get a Chloe, we didn't get a Lana pop, but we got Lois in her business suit, which is like flash forward last episode, Lois, you know, like, well, the, to, to be fair, she's not wearing like her glasses and stuff. So I think it is true, true, true. And I, and I saw, cause I was wondering, like, <laughs> is this a generic Lois lane or is this small little specific? If you look at, um, I believe it's the second episode. Yeah. The second episode of season nine, it's tallow. If you look up images like just photos of the episode like promotional images of lois erica Rance on set she's wearing something that looks pretty much like that so I'm like that okay. must be what they base it off of see um, but still season nine <laughs> like, it's like um smallville was so much more than the last two or three years right i think yes. most most people know smallville from the first first two or three years so like so, so i know we're like talking about like collectibles and stuff now but real quick on this funko pop thing like the first wave right as, as we kind of were talking about Clark on the Scarecrow with the S. Got it. That's a poster. Everybody knew that. Yeah. You know, makes perfect sense. That's iconic. Got it. It's funny that he's wearing the boots, little work boot, like little work boots. The, Tom Welling wore those on set, but Clark was naked. <laughs> like Clark was wearing boxers. So it's yep. like, you're telling me that Whitney beat him up, ripped all his clothes off, and then put his shoes back on? No, that, that's just a funny, like, no, <laughs> there was no 
QC check on that. Like, well, I'm someone just, saying, just saw the photo, like the set photo of Tom Welling was like, oh, yeah, he had, he had shoes on. I'm just thinking, supposed do they to have ever shoes on. do a Funko with like bare feet? That's not like an animal. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've tried to draw the line at just Smallville because I don't want to fall down that rabbit well, hole. <laughs> yeah, I, I fell down that because I had friends get me a couple and like I, I still stick to just basically Superman. And then mm-hmm. I have like one of each Justice Leaguer. So I have yeah. comic book, John Stewart, uh, Flash from the TV show aquaman from the movie you know like there, so there's a, there, is there a uh, flash from the the J- grant gustin flash yeah okay yeah See, if like there was ever a john wesley ship fungal pop i'd be like ah maybe i gotta go maybe i gotta oh, get I would, it so. i would totally get that, uh, with but. the red boots speaking of shoes and stuff but but so so we got scarecrow clark we have series finale last shot superman rip clark okay then you have president lex great lois lane okay green arrow Okay, so it's like these are all like season seven forward, except for Scarecrow Clark. So I, what I, so fine, you know what? That's wave one. They did their market research. They decided we gotta have a Lois Lane in here. Green Arrow's popular. Sure, give him a Lex, and then we'll give you two Clarks. I de- like you, blue shirt, red jacket, Clark. So, this, so so here's my, and I say this a lot on Twitter, but I just want to <laughs> say this now. All right, wave two for the Funko Pops. Blue shirt, red jacket, Clark Kent. All right, season nine trench coat blur, Clark Kent uh lana lang with the kryptonite necklace from season one chloe sullivan holding a smallville torch okay. lionel luther number five with yeah. long hair yeah i mean <laughs> so that's, that's your that's, next wave like yeah. I, and then keep going like do like Third you know you do, you do the kints you do the other heroes if you do three and four but for it you got to have more of the smallville core cast in my opinion if you're gonna do more of this I, don't, I have no idea if they're gonna do more i don't know what the sales were i would love if they did more because i want to expand my collection to have to have just more of like because smallville it had a lot of stuff but there's not that much smallville no. memorabilia merchandise well, so like anything that's like officially put out with smallville on it i'm all about it so anyway well, like there you go there's my phone call rant <laughs> um no i agree with you because we get all these waves of other stuff and i'm i'm hoping like you know one of my biggest hopes is with mcfarland putting out so many figures that they'll go back to starting to issue figures from shows because I want my Tyler Hecklin Superman figure, but I would love for them to go back and do like a Smallville figure, um, you know, because like you said, I, I have, there's three Clarks that were released. The first one where he's wearing the blue sweater. The action figures. Yeah. Y- yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I have all three of them, you know, and then that one was, there was uh, that one, Lex and cheerleader Lana. Mm-hmm. And then they released like the Justice line of figures, which the first one I got of that was Flash. And then I got the last one I got was uh, Clark because he was harder to find. And I still don't have Cyborg. Um, that's the one I didn't get because it's it was harder to find, but the price had went up so high so quickly on that one. But those are over there. I have the Green Arrow, Aquaman, and Impulse. Um, and then the one that I didn't know existed for the longest time was the figure of Clark with the red jacket, the season 10 red jacket. Yeah, your, your favorite jacket, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that one I paid pretty penny for because I was yeah. I have to have this one. <laughs> but uh, but you know what? To, re- to wrap back around your original question, uh, you know, the reason why Smallville is my favorite, I would say, is because it came out at the perfect time for me. Is anyone's listening to any of my podcasts that says this all the time, but I was the same age as Clark Kent was on the show. So I grew up with him all four years of high school. Unlike Clark, I did not drop out of college. I graduated, so I think our past kind of kind of yeah. diverged at that point. Totally, uh, but it was still just a, a marker of my life, you know, for for ten years. I mean, think about you know, from when you're 14 to 24, a lot of life happens, right? But the one constant in my life was Smallville, you know. I mean, so I was in that's high why it'll always be my favorite. I was two years ahead of you, so I was in high school. I went through college, a few years of wandering, got married the year like i got married a couple of months before smallville ended there you and go like, and then like to commemorate like as a wedding gift my my uh, mother-in-law got me a gift card to a tattoo shop as like for me and then when smallville ended is when i got my superman symbol tattoo done and i'm like thinking about all like you said all that life that went on but that was in the background you know because like i watched it live for the first three seasons and then I lost a little bit in season four and five because that was like my 
I'm working all the time. My parents would forget to DVR it or they'd erase it or whatever. So like, you know, no. stuff, you know, and you're just kind of like, <laughs> and then I picked up, you're like, okay, when the season would drop on DVD, I just go buy it and watch it, you know, binging it before we binged on Netflix and then season eight on, I watched live, you know, and that was uh, also season 10 was around when they started the CW app, like, but, you, but it wasn't an app. You had to stream from the website. Cause I remember watching the blue beetle episode from the website. The seat mm. on my laptop. Uh, see, look at this old, old conversation. We, we've come such a long way. It's not like, <laughs> oh man, it's okay. I missed Arrow this week. It'll drop on Hulu tomorrow, right? Yeah. No, none It'll of that. Be, no no it... CW.com, catch up on Supergirl. None of that going on. I just so bought it on iTunes. Then. So it drops in the morning <laughs> and I watch it. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, you know, it's crazy. But, you I know, I was so I... mad. I had, I had a band concert. Um, freshman year of high school and and i set my vcr wrong and i missed leech <laughs> you know and i was so upset and then i then i had to go like on you know share bear or lime wire one of these things and i that's what i always have to do if i missed episodes back in the day like somebody you know would upload these episodes and and you download them and of course this is the internet speed weren't that fast so you gotta you gotta download it before you before you leave to go to school and so maybe by the time you got back, it would be, it would be, be done, done and you could catch up. But anyway, <laughs> that program of the VCR, very important. Very but important. But while you were at school, your mom picked the phone up off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, yeah, by that point, I think we, we, we moved past dial up internet. Thank goodness. But <laughs> uh, my, my mom was always behind on text. Like, we don't need that. And then like, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what's funny is I'm always big. Like if you're into a comic book show, it makes me so mad when you're like, we're not going to put them in costume or we're going to do stuff out of costume. It's like, you know, watching Titans. Sometimes they do these scenes where they do their super heroics, but they're still in street clothes. And I'm like, why? I'm like, you should be in costume. And I, I do this speech, but then I watch Clark and Smallville. I'm like, somehow there, there's a comfort and I'm okay with him running around in his farm, farm boy jacket, you know, being Clark. Cause you know, I, one reason is like, I have never been even before Smallville, a huge fan of the concept of Superboy in the comics, like oh yeah, of him like, of him having a suit in Smallville flying around, like that is such a yeah, like, as a, give as away a your child, secret identity much, right? Like you know, eventually someone's gonna start to put stuff together that Superboy was in Smallville at this time, and then Clark Kent arrives in Metropolis when you know. So I've never been a huge fan of that kind of whole concept. I mean, I know there's actually a lot of history of superman that comes from the superboy comics because you know with that's when jerry siegel was was able to go back and he was able to like ghost write a lot of superboy and mm-hmm. he wrote and he expanded the mythology of the character and a lot of the stuff that we just know as superman like more about krypton and stuff like that bizarro the, made his first appearance there of all kinds yeah, of stuff. yeah came out of the superboy comics and so I, i'm okay with the comics existing but you know if but when i come to looking at that character in like live action i like the idea of like the smallville where he's figuring himself out he still Mm -hmm. does stuff but he doesn't have this i'm gonna go put on my costume and like when did like i always joke like if that's your thing super boy okay when did he wake up one day like now i am superman yesterday i was super boy but today i am superman well that's what's funny about i mean i have seen just a small (laughs) handful of episodes of the superboy tv show but it's like, bro, how old are you? You're like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not a boy. You're, you're in college. I mean, Gerard, Gerard Christopher was right? older. So Gerard Christopher was older as when he started as Superboy. Then I think Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill as Superman and Dean Cain and as Dean well. Kane. Like okay. I think I think because I heard I read this once, and that's this is why I always said with him, like I think Dean Cain was like 27 when he stopped playing Superman. And Gerard Christopher was like 31 when he started playing Superboy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? It's like, exactly. um, but that was a whole licensing right because they could use all, the boy name and not the man. But there's it's still... all kinds of stuff with that. Yeah, but but I think you know, and the the the, the, the crisis, the you know, there's so many crises on DC Comics nowadays, right? But the original 1986 Crisis on Infinite Earths, they rebooted Superman and they just erased Superboy, and that was a genius decision. Yes. Uh, but but. Superman, the movie did it first. People don't realize this. People don't think about it because that's the current continuity. But 
there's no Superboy and Superman in the movie. Yeah. Like, but there is enough wiggle room. Where, like he, he opens that right. He opens that backpack and you see those blankets. You're like that could be his costume. That could be when the Superboy show took place. So anyway, I love that kind of headcanon stuff. But I mean, just just realistically, like you're talking about, like you think about things in comics and they're cool. You look at them in live action, like, well, I think we need to change that. And I think that's definitely something that you have a lot of fun. I think the best way to do it, and this is, hey, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank did this in Superman Secret Origin, one of the best, uh, my, one of my favorite Superman origin stories. Um, they, they have Superboy go to the future with the Legion when he's a kid, does yep. all his little ventures in his costume, and he comes back, and I think they erase his mind, or maybe they don't. Sometimes they do. But I think that's a great cheat of how to, like, you incorporate that, but then you don't do anything. Because in the Superboy comics, most of his adventures were with the Legion because they didn't have, they don't have this comic anymore. But it's called Adventure Comics. It was one yep. of my dad's favorite comics. I have so many old ones from my dad, and those were Superman and the Legion of Superheroes when he's a little boy and they're in the future doing stuff, right? So that's anyway. That's to me, that's a loophole to make that stuff work. But other than that, I don't. I agree with yeah. you. I don't want Superboy flying around in Smallville in costume, right? You know what's funny is like in the in the Jeff Johns Secret Origin, a super issues one and two are like okay. But I love what he did when they got to Metropolis because I loved how he did Metallo as being like under General Lane. And I love this, the smallness of it. You know, you know, I was like, I love Superman Birthright. It's one of my favorite. But my favorite part of that story is actually the beginning where he's like building up to go to Metropolis. And then by the end, you know, it's this huge, you know, battle thing. But what I loved in Origins was just how small it was. It was Superman versus like Parasite and Metallo. Yeah, the nope. movies can learn a lot from that by because once you have like it's the end of the world stakes, where do you do from where do you go from there? Where do you go? You can't you can't top it at that point, right? <laughs> exactly. So um, so you're talking about like live action. So here's like the question that divides all Superman fans. Trunks. Where do you stand with trunks? You have to wear the underwear on the outside of the pants. That that is essential to me. Like I I like I don't <sighs> I, I don't like look at ones without them and say like, oh, well, that's like, oh, here's the, okay. Like I, <laughs> obviously it's from the time period, right? Um, but he's an alien and they, this is how they wore stuff on the alien planet. Fine. Like there's no need. To, I, I disagree with the reasoning of why they take them off. If that makes sense. Like I don't mind costumes when they're not there, you know? Um, I don't think like, oh, it's a terrible costume now because there's no trunks on it. I disagree with the whole like, well, that looks dumb and it's the 21st century now. We need to take them off. I'm like, no, that's how Superman looks. You know, like, yeah. you don't need to take those off. I think with Batman, it kind of, it makes sense. It's more tactical stuff. Like, I don't, I don't think all these other superheroes need that. But when Superman, that is how the Kryptonians dressed and it's like him wearing like some Kryptonian flag, if you will. I don't know. So I like the trunks. They never bothered me. And I don't think they're, um, I don't think they make him look silly because it's just it, it, like Christopher Reeve looks, looks all, he, he demands your respect. Yeah. walking around like that you don't you don't laugh at him you know i mean you might but then you're gonna stop when he starts talking to you and stuff so that's the thing i love the trunks i think you know if tyler hecklin's costume had trunks and lower shoulders and a, and a <laughs> cleaner bigger s that, that those are my those are my, it's a very it's very close to being a great costume it's, um i think the shoulders have changed throughout the se seasons i wonder like if he just had they're slightly tweaking it you think or because i wonder if like he just hadn't bulked up enough when they started maybe because of covid like or something like he couldn't get to the gym or i don't know but it just feels like when it started like you're the pilot it looks like it's a lot bigger up top yeah some of those shots look ridiculous like he's like an action figure <laughs> and then you go to like the final the finale it looks a little bit better fitting yeah. so it makes me wonder but I loved his S on his previous costume. I yes, I did not like his first costume, but the S was the best part, and they changed it. It's small and like kind of dirty sometimes now. And it's I don't flat. Understand. Like I yeah. like the, I like the three D S that pops. Yeah. So bring I mean, back so, that. Absolutely. I mean, if we're talking trunks, you know, talking costume, right? I think Tyler Hecklin's uh, Fleischer costume, right, that he has in the flashback episodes. It's fair. That's a top three Superman costume right there. It, it shows is. you that that costume still works, right? And just. For some context for people, I think my favorite, my top three Superman costumes all have trunks on them. It would be the Brandon Routh uh, Kingdom Come costume from Crisis. I think that's the best live action Superman costume. I do it's too. Fantastic. I agree. Uh, and the only reason it beats Christopher Reeve is because of the production value, like a material and stuff. And I like the cape. I like the longer cape, you know, yep. uh, for Brandon Routh has to do. Christopher Reeve would be second because that is just 
right off the page that proves that you can <coughs> if you do it right accurate. you can yeah there's nothing wrong with it if it's not broke don't fix it right yes there's been tweaks over the years but that's pretty much off the page superman his costume and then third would be the tyler hecklin uh, uh, flashback costume I, i'm just i love it and i and i wish i i hope that they'll kind of maybe meld those a little bit moving forward on the show i, I think they can continue to tweak Tyler yeah. Hecklin's costume, uh, but uh, or if he just wore the fly show on all the time, that would be that would be fantastic. It would be it would be so. cool if there's like a, a an episode where like his costume gets torn, destroyed, lost, whatever, and uh, he's got to go back to the other one. Now that'd be fantastic. And uh, you know, um, and he has to go back to the other one. I think that would be um, pretty awesome. So <laughs> my one friend James, my co-host, is messaging me. Uh, uh, and uh, it's just he's like, oh man, he was he wanted to join us today, but he wasn't able, unable to. So uh, it's just funny. But um, you know, you talk about that, and I agree. Like, I think Brandon Routh has always been able to pull off trunks well, even on his Superman Returns. I think he pulled off the trunks. Well. Superman Returns, which is one of my least favorite costumes. <laughs> for talking costumes but yeah but, hey they had the trunks though so yeah. I, credit I like i like the belt you know well, with Superman the Return. s in the front yeah i thought it wasn't bad yeah, I fine. Just, i've never been a big a huge fan of just the oval so i was like okay mm-hmm. the belt's not bad it um, to me was that it was the, much like the tyler heck one now the high collar yes. and the shoulders like that those are somehow connected somehow and if you need a low collar for superman just showing off those collarbones it's part of it i don't to me that's part of it i yep. uh it, you know, it looks too much like a T-shirt. <laughs> it's I agree. Got the high collar, you know. <laughs> I agree completely. Um, yeah, see, we're on the same page here with, yeah. the, with that. Like, and you know, I've come to the realization about trunks is um, I I don't mind them in the co- in the comics. That's fine. You know, the art's fine. Live action just depends on how you create the suit and wear the suit. You know, because like you said, the Kingdom Come suit it worked fine. Like and the Fleischer suit worked fine, um, but then I just feel like there's that area where it could not work. So it's just like I, yeah, like know, on sometimes. the Henry Cavill costumes, they would stick out, right? You know? Like I don't, you know, but I think uh-huh. there's color you can bring to it. So, but it's just funny that you, you, you just want something to break that up, you know, the, all that blue. You need something to break up the blue, and that's so. why I like I like the belt that Tyler's costume has now. Like it's the very new Fifty Two. It's got but it's got yellow and red. Yeah, his his, his belt originally when he showed up on Supergirl, not a great belt. It did not a good uh, look. His costume, like I just remember seeing that first costume when I was photo, and I was just like, yeah. But who is your favorite other than Tom Welling? Who's your favorite Clark Kent? <laughs> yeah, other than Tom Welling, yeah, because course, Tom, you know, Tom's always falls in that medium ground of like he's Clark, but like he hasn't really had to create that. Um, people just showing up the house that split identity you know um of clark yeah that's the thing about tom willing if if they had made him do it and had more opportunity he would have been great i mean because if you look at the end of season 10 i mean you mentioned the blue beetle episode before the like, booster right he's so good in that when he's yes. like oh I got, you guys have a bathroom i got a milkshake and, and all that he's so good at that right um he's, but yeah he, you know like you said he always played evil clark or yeah, e- like evil? the villain great so and, good. <laughs> and i i told i like in my head canon like i told you was like if I could go back in time, like if I was George Lucas, I'd be like, that, that's who I'd get for Anakin Skywalker. Like Tom Welling is Anakin Skywalker. Right? Hey, just, what, just think about it because right it, would make, you, it yeah. would make you feel like, oh, he's big already as Vader. Not that Vader's height and everything is built because he's part robot, but that's a whole nother. Yeah. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I gotta go, I gotta go with, uh, this is tough. Um, I gotta go with Brandon Routh and Chris Reeve. Because Brandon Routh is playing Christopher Reeves, Clark Kent, you know? Uh, so this is a kind of a cheat answer. But I think Brandon Routh kind of updated the Christopher Reeves, Clark Kent to make it more realistic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because because we love the distinction between Christopher Reeves, Superman, and Clark Kent. But if he's that over-the-top bumbling, like, who would take this guy seriously at all for anything, you know? And and that's, like, come to be, like, part of my, like, I, I enjoy it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's part of what kind of my problem is like the idea is to blend in and see Meek, but like, he's so over the top. I'm like, first of all, would you take him serious as a reporter? Like, you're like, okay, can this guy do this job? Like, 
going undercover, getting <laughs> the facts. Guy, you know what I'm saying? Job, right. Um, could... I, I will say, I will say the first two Superman movies, right? Like he's new. So he's like, he's like getting used to it. Right. And by the time you go to the third and the fourth one, maybe that's just an acting thing or writing thing, but he is more comfortable uh, being Clark Kent, you know, like, especially in Superman four. I mean, we're talking about Superman four. Yeah. There's some great stuff in there. And I like him as Clark Kent is great in that because he's like a toned down ridiculous version. Yeah. Uh, so in my head, Ken, it's like, okay, he kind of tested the waters. He's like, okay, maybe I should, maybe we should tone this back a little bit, you know, because the, the thing about the Brandon Ruth Clark Kent is like, he's a goofy guy, but he's kind of a wallflower. He kind of blends in. He's not like sticking out too much. He's kind of, he's quirky and, but right. he's not like, Oh my, can you believe this guy over here? drawing attention to himself too and that's much. the other thing is like i feel like in the first superman the movie like it's the opposite like he draws too much attention to himself for being too over the top so you're like right you're like everyone's paying attention to him but not like hey, you're really overdoing it bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so that's a uh, yeah so so that's i would love to see more of brandon ralph as superman and clark kent you know i think he did him getting a second chance at it second crack at it with crisis was fantastic and we got to see a little bit of his clark and you know a little bit of superman and um, I think everybody responded real well to it. And of course, I'm sure he'd love to do it. So give us more of that, please. We have so many Batman running around these days. Can we have some more Superman? So <laughs> even, even, okay. So, you know, fingers crossed, like my dream at this moment would be that because <clears throat> just recently, I don't know if you're watching star girl um, last week's episode was when John Wesley ship showed up again as Jay Garrick mm -hmm. on star girl with the JSA. Now, now he's a different Jay Garrick than the one from The Flash. It's it's kind of in that murkiness of <laughs> okay. this is a post crisis rewritten history because uh -huh. Star Girl's Earth is the new Earth Two that has right. to be discovered by uh, Team Flash. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of that it's post crisis revisionist history. You know, but it's very much the it feels the same. Like I really love seeing him as Jay because. If you're watching the show, I really think Starman, as he's supposed to be, is a d bag. <laughs> like, <laughs> and and like Jay puts him in his place. All right. Um, all right. So like with that. all that, what I'm saying is, I would love, um, Brandon Ralph's Kingdom Come Superman to be some form of like the JSA or past Superman or something. You know? Yeah. There's plenty of ways to use him that way. Absolutely. You and I had this conversation about like how crisis affected the other shows was like you know they tried to say like all the dc shows existed then post crisis only the shows that they tease at the end still existed and it was kind of one of those, that way like, to me you know so like <laughs> so that was the end of smallville like what we saw like smallville ended in a you know that post crisis because you know in what's what i cracked up about is they threw swamp thing in there and yet swamp thing was already been canceled, canceled. <laughs> all they had to do and i know they only had tom and erica from one day but seriously, all they had to do was shoot one shot, one setup of them on the porch, two little girls, you know, looking up at the sun and like Earth 167. That's all we needed. And it would have taken an extra three hours. Maybe they just didn't have the time that day or not even at the don't even go up to the porch. Go up and stand next to the fence where you already were. You don't have to change your camera setup yep. or anything. And I just I needed that one extra thing. To make to, I'm like, because I what am, am I supposed to think Smallville got erased now? I mean, I didn't that, see them get restored. I didn't see get Birds of Prey get restored or, or Batman and, 66. All of the shows from way back, you just erased them. So, I mean, that's it's horrible, know, man. But that's kind of how I felt in the same time. Like, this is, um, well, they botched that whole thing, though, you know, because that, well, well, I mean, like the end, because the whole point of the Christ on Infinite Earth in the comics is like, all right, everything's on one earth now. I'm like, okay. And of course, as years went on, the comics, like, well, there's 52 earths so now, there's now fine yep. it's the comics but in the tv universe like they were like all right that's the crisis and then you have black lightning and supergirl and the flash which was, and arrow which was awesome Fantastic. and then also and then they're like well titans is on another earth and then the other big one was they for sure said doom patrol is another earth even though we had doom patrol on titans <laughs> which just comes yes <laughs> the conflict there it just see here's the thing right they're like well crap we can't do two supermen because remember in Christ, you know, if people are familiar with the comic book in Christ and Infinite Earth, they, mold, they merge all the Earths together, but then the Earth 2 Superman is still around and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa where's my job? And he goes to Perry White's office. It's kind of a funny thing. Um, you couldn't do that because they'd have to explain, well, what do we do with Brandon Ralph or what do we do with so-and-so? And, but, but I guess my point with them botching it was like, okay, I get it. We're all on one Earth now. And then at the end, like the Stephen Mill voiceover is like, and then another Earth showed back up, and they're still there. I'm like, that was sloppy. To me, that was sloppy. That, that was would, sloppy. That would have been better if it had been like 
this like just like after everything had ended we had this like black of just seeing like the planets divide again and like a tease because then mm. like they've done nothing with the idea of this new multiverse nothing has changed other than black lightning which is now over and supergirl <laughs> which is now over yeah and and we have a new universe. batwoman who has no connection to these people you know so yeah. all, all that setup is over that that, but- that justice league <laughs> shot of them is is kind of a joke now yeah you know? <laughs> green arrow is dead <laughs> you know and the, it's so it's just like and the thing is like like we said they re they showed us what was still restored brandon ralph's earth was restored yeah and he's got the yellow s you so know which i would love to see that so it's kind of like okay so why would you do that just to get that iconic shot you know that's fine him? though that was much yeah, better yeah, than I mean, superman returns one i'm fine for it. and the music like i don't know i'm fan service sometimes i love it and sometimes i roll my eyes but i loved it that time so <laughs> what about evil kevin conroy superman is he back <laughs> so, no <laughs> and that i mean that was just great period just because it was like the voice of batman yeah you know it's, it's and tough i didn't bother me that he was evil though a lot of people really upset by that like we finally I, got kevin conroy live action he's evil batman i'm like yeah well, you know he flipped the script know. on us you know and it, it even had like the you know kingdom come style armor just to you know throw yeah. some. and then some dark knight com- returns dialogue and all that yeah. i don't know it was just it was so amazing to although he wasn't in a batman costume right um, to to hear his voice and see his face and interact with Batman universe characters, um, that was fantastic. So I, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people feel gypped about that, but other short of him being Bruce Wayne and Batman Beyond, what else were you going to do with him? You know what I mean? Right. So right. I mean, which I would still love. I would like Michael Keaton to be that. But if not, let's get Kevin Connery up there. Yeah. Uh, as Batman What's, Beyond. I don't know what were we talking about. <laughs> yeah tangents <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm like looking at, i'm looking at all the questions like i had mapped out and i'm just like i think we've hit in inadvertently in every way we've had but here's one um i got two more for you sure if you could have one of superman slash kryptonian powers which one would it be just one yeah i would say invulnerability because yep. then because I feel like, and you can get really into the weeds with this. I'm like, yeah, if I fly, but I'm not invulnerable, <laughs> that's not going to help me if a bird hits me. <laughs> that was like when I first was like posed this question and we were talking through it with my friend Rebecca from Supergirl Radio. I was like, you know what? Like most time I go for flight, but then I got thinking like speed and all that. Like if my skin's not protected, like, you know, the flash has the speed force, you know, that kind of protects him. But I'm like, if I don't have invulnerable skin and I'm flying or moving or anything, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> like, like strength mm-hmm. is great, but if my if I'm not invulnerable, like that's gonna yeah. hurt. So like, I, like, I can lift a car, but is it gonna like cut my arm off when I lift it up? Like, so these are I don't just safety net is a vulnerability. <laughs> you know, that's like you, you get pushed off a building, you're fine, right? Yep. You, you're in an explosion, you can walk out of it, right? So I go to invulnerability. That's, yep. That would be my go-to. Like, yes, it would be cool to fly, um, but I mean, X-ray vision, heat vision, like those don't really appeal to me. I mean, they're kind of cool, but I just heat vision is just the one I would love because like you know just because it's that like I could do something from a distance just like someone making you mad you're just like you know burn their tires or you know mm-hmm. heat up your steak you know whatever. You, well, what, what side note since we're all about tangents here favorite heat vision for you do you like small to me it's smallville I thought that was very clever I like smallvilles and like that ties into like it was first but then you know in the in the screen they did it with Superman Returns like the waves the heat waves you know, like I thought that was the best that like the projection of heat instead um, of laser vision, which a lot of people call you know, it. Right? I thought yeah. the the blue from their eyes and in, in Supergirl and Super uh, Man were at first I thought was cool. But then like James and I have kind of rationale like that would have been cool if like in Superman and Lois when they are using their heat vision and they went full solar flare. It goes like from red to blue as it gets hotter, right? Yeah. Like if they that's would right, sh- kids. Blue is hotter than red. It's scientific fact. Yeah. If they would show that, like, you know, when they're like going full solar flare when they mm-hmm. into the erratic if it was like there was oh, red yeah. and then it went blue, yeah. that'd be a cool way of tying it back around. Instead of just ignoring the fact it was ever blue, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <it's- laughs> they would have heard a lot of stuff on that show. That's his own conversation. But uh, um, well, but Smallville's yeah. evolved too, right? I remember when I first, because I was so excited, like, man, Heat Division, this is awesome. And season two, Smallville, I'm like, I remember watching it the first time. I was like, what, what? 
what, what is that? Like some squiggly line? I was <laughs> like, over the course of the episode, I got used to it. I'm like, you know what? That's really clever because we're never supposed to see heat vision. You know, that's why he can use it in front of other people and that kind of thing. So that, that works. But then as Smallville went on, like he got more powerful, like, you know, to, to your point, right? As if they had, if, if only they had done that Supergirl and Superman showing the red to blue, Smallville went from like, clear to like red and orange and yellow kind of so like they they played with that evolution of the power level too so uh, but i just thought of all the reinventions of powers obviously the the special effects comp that's another reason i love smallville right so i'm smallville guy right? i'm here to i'm here to talk yep. about it so like all of the powers you know x-ray vision was fantastic seeing the skeletons the super speed using the matrix special effects that had changed the game then in the early you know 2000s like smallville is the best you know, articulation of all those powers to, to me. So that's another reason to love it. And have, have you watched Titans at all this season? I have not. I have not, to be honest. The, the show is like, it's, Titans is one of those like, so it's got hit and misses. I, I, but, have, I have friends that are keeping up with it and I've heard things. <laughs> oh, but so. what I love is Superboy. I okay, love yeah. the way I've they're heard, doing. I've heard Superboy. consistently he's he's they were handling him very well. So I love that he's a little bit more timid and I don't, I hate using childlike, but there's a little bit more innocence to him instead of being like, the angry Superboy from Young Justice. Mm, um, okay. But one thing is when he does X-ray vision, his eyes go white. It's like this white glow. So like oh. it's really cool because they found a way of like visualizing him, like Superman, Superboy, like doing X-ray vision. So it's kind of cool just, you know, instead of doing like the glasses down, like, you know, and I mean. Super, I love that. Uh, I love the kind of like lean forward and squint a little bit though like i you know and then they do like the <laughs> like you know lois and clark had the first kind of representation of like seeing something with his eyes for oh I, I i do not like that at all i do not like when like beam like <laughs> cones come out of his eyes and like that's i don't know like it was but, just but it's hard to do the technology wasn't there yet so it's what just they like do, right? how they did super hearing on small where they he'd like turn and they like spin around and like zoom in like you'd see the eardrum you know that's one effect that small never could really crack they tried many they tried the eardrum the cgi eardrum with csi style they tried the whole like zoom in on somebody's mouth right mm -hmm. and then they held the hold up like you said like like a you just do a 360 around them and like like wash them out with light <laughs> like yep. they just could never super hearing is a hard one to articulate so and, that, that's that's one that everybody has trouble with and that's why like when i saw the super boy and using the eyes i was like oh that's that's cool it's just the way of kind of you know because it's like it's like when you go back and watch like x-men first class and james mcavoy is professor Ash, like what do I do? And he did, he did the touch like, the temple thing, yeah. you know, just to kind of give some sort of like cue that he's using his ability. Cause other than that, it's just like this. Yeah. It's just, it, it, and same thing with, you know, Christopher Reeve in the movies, like he doesn't use it that much, but it, there's no, like, he's just standing there and you kind of like have a close up of his face looking at things and he's doing x-ray and it's like, okay, we could, we could make this more interesting. So whenever they can play with that, that's yeah. cool. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that about the, because I've, I've Titans and these are, that's a big blind spot for me so far. It's not, you know, as you know, I watch so much Smallville and older <laughs> superhero shows. It's like, I mean, I, I plan to watch this at some point. I'm looking forward to it. And it's great that this, this library of <laughs> superhero <laughs> stuff with characters I like is it's just building up. Uh, but uh, I've, yeah, I've heard it's hit or miss, but I've heard they did a lot, a lot of cool things. And I'm looking forward to getting into it down the road. So I reckon I always tell people like if they're it's just season two, watch the episode of Connor because it's very, bottled like it's very like you don't have to have seen the show like you'll get the little bit of mm -hmm. connective context but that's you know yeah i might have to do I, I might do a superman special about that sometime on <laughs> my podcast give me the excuse to dive into titans for that because because and i love i love crypto i love dogs I love crypto. yeah i, I love that I got a white there. dog on crypto it's fantastic so i love that crypto is in there um so my last question and then we'll let you go because for some reason everyone decided in the family to show up to my house at the same time <laughs> um in the comics or in film the kent's alive or dead how do you feel the kent should play their role should they be alive or dead i think they should be alive i think that superman is not spider-man and i think they lean into that a little too much like jonathan kent is not uncle ben right but but and i love superman the movie right but and that's fine <laughs> to do with that you know you, you there there are valid interpretations of them being alive not being alive but i think because like the iconic definitive version of superman did that everybody feels like they have to do that yeah, like on Smallville, when they thought at the time they're wrapping up in season five, like, all right, well, I guess it's time to kill Jonathan Kent. Oh, we ran five more years. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have killed off uh, Jonathan Kent. Um, and that's a great refreshing thing about Lois and Clark. And I've really been rediscovering Lois and Clark's TV show and, you know, becoming friends with Matt Tricks, who does the yeah. Lois and Clark podcast and having the um, it be on streaming, you know, more accessible and stuff. And, and 
having him just be able to talk to the kids and stuff is great because like I I like where everybody doesn't know secret identities, which yes. is the thing in the Arrowverse. And so if you're gonna keep that where like everybody doesn't know, like obviously Lois will know at some point, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. Um, but other than that, he doesn't allow people to talk to. So I love that he has his parents to kind of rely on because the kids are kind of what made Superman who he is. They're the difference between him being, you know, good or or maybe maybe not so good as they've seen in other versions. No, so I, I totally 100% are behind you. Um, because, you know, like we watched uh, for review the George Reeves and the Kirk Allen series and both on the start, like he's adopted. And it's like, then as he reached manhood, the, the foster parents passed away and like they're gone. Right. And it's just like, like, dang. They killed both off quick. Because I think the, the idea then was like the kids were even older. Yeah, you know? they were they were like they were like in their sixties when they found when they him. They found him, the, right? So that, that's yeah. I'm a little more like okay, that's I'll go with that. But like, in Smallville, like you can't cast these young kids and then kill off Jonathan. Like, what are you doing? So I, I like you know putting the kids as finding him when they're in their like mid to late thirties, where they're just old enough to where they might be out of their child years, like in that mindset. But right. not- well, and that's what makes Clark more of a miracle because Martha couldn't have kids biologically, right? right. Although she technically, quote unquote, should have been able to at that age range. So that's and a that's- layer that I enjoy about Smallville. And I like one of my favorite is I think it was in Grant Morrison's. I think it's collected in the Grant Morrison trade in volume one of New 52 action is when you have this. Um, it's Jonathan and Martha going to the fertility doctor and they're using all their savings to try everything. And it's like. The, the day that they're driving home from the doctor when they found out like there is no hope, like they've exhausted everything is when they find Clark's ship. And it just there makes it that much more stronger, you know? Um, yeah. And I agree. Like, you know, I love the Superman earth one that J. Michael Straczynski did, but I hated the Kents where it gone, you know, in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Superman and Lois, for example, makes sense at that point in his life. Right. To have they even, lost. even they killed off Jonathan. And I was like, knowing ahead of the time, like, oh man, they're going to kill Martha too. But if you think about the timeline, she would be like in her 80s by then. Right. So, so that makes sense for me. Cause like, you know, like I said, once again, if you were to watch Lois and Clark and then kind of jump to this show, you have both parents. And then it's like, now it's like, what, what is Clark now without his parents? You know, like that whole show is about, He's the, you know, one of the themes is like, he's now the paternal, like, I, I kind of am surprised they didn't kill off Sam Lane. And I say that I was, I was shocked as well. Yeah, because I, I thought shocked. they would, because if you look at the progression of the show, his mother dies, Jarrell is later destroyed. So the last parental figure that Clark has is Sam Lane, his father in law. And I thought Sam Lane would die. So the idea of like, Clark no longer has any paternal figure to look up to. Because he is that paternal figure for his boys. And that's like the closing of that arc of, I can't go to anyone else for wisdom. The son becomes the father. The father <laughs> becomes the son. There it is. <laughs> you know, and I, I just, I like the kids being alive because I feel like the kids become mom and pa to like everyone in the DC universe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Supergirl, especially, right. That That's right. That's a misstep on Supergirl show. Like I'm like, who, who she has a sister and random parents now. Super Supergirl's whole legacy period in the comics is so convoluted. Oh like, yeah. Like which when, version and all that. Definitely. Yeah. When yeah. you get into like, you have the, the Danvers, the Linda Lee, the matrix, like all Mat- this. Yes. Matrix. That's the, that's the one that dated Lex Luthor during the death of Superman. Right. Yeah. Like, and you're just like, ridiculous. And you're just like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, that's that whole crisis being the only Kryptonian thing. But, you know, one of my favorites I always reference is I love the um, episode of Justice League Unlimited, Comfort and Joy, where Clark comes home for Christmas and brings Martian Manhunter. And Martha's like, has like the sweater, like we knitted an extra, you know, gift from church here. And like, he like oh, yeah. gets bigger and puts it on. And she's like, there's blankets in the cupboard or, you know, like that's how I see them like to anybody that Clark brings around. And mm-hmm. even it echoes back in the uh, Superman man of tomorrow animated film when Martian Manhunter shows up at the Kent's door and Clark's talking to him. The Kent's are very welcoming. And that's just how I see them to everyone. Like one of my favorite memes was the mother's day uh, meme of Superman hugging Martha is like the first panel. And then there's Batman. And then Martha Kent's hugging Bruce. Mm, you know, I haven't seen like, that. That's like great. It's, it's, it's somebody's somebody did it, but like, you know, that's how I would see her period. Like yeah. she, she's the mother to anyone who comes around. Yeah. So I like the idea of the Kent's 
being alive, you know? And that's why mm-hmm. it's one of those questions I throw out there for fans. Cause you know, we we've had both of them gone, just one of them gone, but we've never had Martha die first. And it just mm-hmm. be Jonathan and Clark. Cause it's always Smallville, kind of bit- Smallville played with that in season five and that in the episode <laughs> of Brainiac, right. Where she had like the disease and like, Oh man, are they going to kill Martha? But no, they, they stuck to Jonathan, but that would be interesting. I would love I, to there's see. There's gotta the, be a version like that eventually, right? I would love I to see so. everything flipped. Whereas like just for like, I don't know. I don't know what I would want to see them. Like Martha dies first, and it's it Jarrell's crystal destroyed, and he has Lara's crystal. So the idea is his earth father's mm. alive and his Kryptonian mother, instead of always being the opposite, where his earth mother lives and he has his Kryptonian father. Yeah. It'd be kind of interesting, but yeah. Zach, why don't you tell everyone if they haven't picked up on you know your podcast where they can find you online? and get a hold of you and listen to your podcast. Sure. Well, you can find me personally on Twitter at MoronZach. That's M-O-O-R-E-O-N-Z-S-E-H. I'm also the host of Always Hold On to Smallville, which is a podcast where we talk about each and every episode of that young Superman show. Uh, You've been on it several times. and will be again in the future. Always fun talking to you about Smallville. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at Always Smallville with one S. Always Hold On to Smallville on Facebook. And you can send us an email at alwaysmallville at gmail.com. And I also do some podcasts on the United Federation of Podcasts. And you can find us at UFP Earth, do a movie show, do a show about Bigfoot, you know, just some, you know, uh, bi-weekly, monthly, you know, over there. But I uh, have a good time talking to some friends about some, some subjects that we love over there. And that's Twitter at UFP Earth. All right. Well, Zach, thanks for being on Krypton Report. Uh, we appreciate coming on and talking, you know, Smallville, which, you know, always gets some love on this show. But it's just nice to see that, you know, just branching out that, the super fandom is huge. There's a Superman for everyone. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to argue over, you know, small stuff. So until next time, dear listeners, remember. Mm-hmm.